Welcome to the use case on antibody design. In this talk, we will combine molecular dynamic simulation and docking technique to antibody design. I'm Alessandra Villa and I work in Stockholm at the Royal Institute of Technology. And this, the work that I present is in collaboration with Susanna Zandova and Alexander Bogan on the University of Utrecht in the Netherlands. Why antibody design? Uh, in the last uh, period, there is a growing interest for the pharmaceutical company in antibody as a drug. Uh, indeed, already antibody is used in, in therapeutics in, to cure some particular disease uh, like rheumatoid arthritis, multi sclerosis multiple, and other type of cancer like prostate cancer. They are used as, also as a detector in diagnostic and for example, uh, in the pregnancy, pre per pregnancy test, they are used already in the pregnancy test. Uh, antibody are protein that uh, bind to a specific protein called antigen that is a unique site of a pathogenic, of a virus, of a bacteria. And this will trigger an immune response, so will help, will tell the immune system to destroy the site. So it's very important that antibody has very high specificity. So usually antibody has a Y shape, or we can think about like a protein form of three arms. And at the end of the arm, we found this variable region and where we have the hypervariable loop. And those loops are the ones that contribute and to the high specificity to the antigen. The other part of the region, the fragment antigen binding, that region is mainly constant and is not specific of different antibody. Another peculiarity of antibody is the low immunogenicity. So which is the challenge in design antibody? One, we would like to predict the antibody three-dimensional structure. Only knowing the antibody structure, we can know also to, we are able to model the antibody binding mode to the antigen. Of course, once we have it, a structure and the binding bond, we would also like to improve this binding bond, to, to improve the binding affinity. The specific aim of the work that I will present is just to, we start just to willing to improve the docking protocol for antibody. A standard protocol is that you take the unbound antibody, the antibody structure, the antigen structure, usually from experimental source, and you, you plug in in a docking protocol, like the standard one of ad hoc, to get a model of the complex. We would like to improve, so that means to have a better model, a model with high quality. That is what means a better model. But of course, we want to achieve this still thinking about a balance between accuracy, to have something very accurate, but in the same times that it will not take too long. Otherwise, it's always a problem if we have a very accurate model or pr approach, but it takes too long to get the results, we always get the results too late. And also we would like something that is easy to implement so that we can implement in a workflow that can be distributed to people to use. The approach that we thought about that we are following is to combine a docking technique, and this is where we perform with ad hoc, and molecular dynamics technique performed with chromos. First of all, we need a test, a pool of protein system, complex antigen, body antigen complex and this pool of complex are we, we took 11 complex from docking benchmark affinity benchmark and uh, one of the requirement of those uh, structure is the availability of experimental structure both of the apo form and the olo form we will use the apo form of the antibody and antigen as input, while we will use the whole form as a reference to test our model, the model that we will build. 
in all in this year we have looked different type of your trying different type of workflow first creating a model then simulate it but it was not working so good then we also try to simulate both antibody antigen and then combine it to get out of structure but also in this way we were not so happy with the results if you are curious on more details on those protocols you can just ask in the q a section the final workshop workflow that provides us a better model than the original one is the one that I will present now. So we start from the unbound antibody and the unbound antigen. Then we will perform a simulation, a molecular dynamics, we will simu perform a molecular dynamic simulation of a stand of 100 nanoseconds in an MVT ensemble, a standard condition only of the antibody. Of course, here we can meet and see some issue. For example, in the original structure might be missing, there might be some loop missing. We know that we have running a simulation with a fixed protonation state. So the protonation, so all what we simulate is according to the protonation states that we have. So if we have a change in the interface of an inter auto unbounding that we cannot mimic. We might be also the present if binding is promoted by the presence of ion and interface that also will be not included in this approach. Then when after the modeling we get a, a pool of structure and the question is we cannot analyze all of them with ad hoc. We have to have a, a clever way to select a pool, a restricted pool of structure that we can plug in in the docking program. And so we decide to look to two different uh, a cluster approach. We look. Uh, we use uh, the Arvik Patrick approach and a Gromox approach. Here I briefly describe in this slide. I will not go in details the difference between the two approach, and uh, the Gromox approach provides us better results, both in terms of hit rate and success rate. Again, if you are curious of the comparison between these two, please ask in the Q and A section. So what we have done this fitting, first we fit with this uh, clustering, first we fit the backbone, then uh, we select the hypervariable loop, we cluster, we apply the cluster analysis only on the hypervariable loops, and we extract the centroid of the cluster, of the most 20 most populated cluster. So now we have uh, this pool of 20 structure for each of our antibody. We add to this pool the original crystallographic structure and we will plug in those antibody structure together with the original crystallographic structure from the antigen in ad hoc. So we perform a standard or a rigid uh, docking starting with the rigid body energy minimization we will take as a result 100 times the number of structure of antibody structure that we have plugged in. We proceed with simulating annealing. And here with the 400 structure, we go on with refinement solvent where we get 400 final structure that we will analyze. The, to assess the quality of the model that we got, we have uh, two different approach. The one approach is, uh, one parameter is DOCU and the other parameter is ad hoc score. So the ideal scenario will be with decreasing the value of ad hoc score, so decreasing the, that is based only on energy, it's based on energy contribution, we will have an increase of doc Q. Indeed, doc Q is varied from zero to one, where one is when the complex is identical to the experimental structure, where the model, model is identical to the experimental structure. As you can see, how is defined the coup is all defined with uh, some structural criteria based on native contents and Rusmi square deviation of the interface area and the ligand position. So we allowed us also to divide the structure between the model obtained between incorrect up to higher level. So here we look our results. On the left side, we have the results with the standard docking protocol, starting from the two X-ray structure. We can see that 
we have most of the model that we obtain are accurate. There is not really a clear trend between other score and a docu. And then here are the results with our new protocol. So we can see that indeed we have some of the spectral trend between the other score, the crease in the other score, we have an increasing of the value of docu. We have a higher population of medium type of model. And also the peak of the distribution of the model is moving through a medium model. So we have an improve in the quality, clear improve according to these two criteria in the ad hoc, in the model scoring. There is another way to evaluate the quality of what we got and is the success rate of the iterate. The success rate will give us the percentage of complex that has a structure of high, medium, acceptable quality in the first structure in the top one structure top five top ten while the success rate the hit rate will provide us the percentage of the complex that has as a high medium uh, uh, acceptable value from the old structure we can see that while uh, when performing only docking we have nothing on the while we perform the docking plus MD we see that we have an improvement it's clear we have more high quality structure appearing that we were not appearing before and also on the top five we have an increase of the number of uh, medium quality structure of course, that is um, accounting for all the 11 antibody antigen complex that we got. We would like to see more in details what happens for... Uh, so that might, doesn't mean that all the system are the best. If you're curious, we have an overview that we can I can show you later. And uh, so we have, for example, one case that has 3V sets that, uh, that is uh, as not performing so good. Indeed, as you can see, there is not much difference applying the two type of approach, the docking and MD docking. And uh, this is also can be expected since if we compare in grays, we have the original X-ray structure of the complex in magenta and in orange, and you can see the loop, the position of the loop in the X-ray structure of the antibody. You can see that there is a, a quite a conformation of arrangement between the bound states and unbound states. So that means that if we are in, if we meet such a conformation of states, our protocol is not able to provide us better approach. So then we change our protocol. We decide to do a new app protocol where we use an accelerate weight histogram to try to enhance the sampling of the antibody structure. What we do, we combine the unbound antibody with the unbound antigen x-ray structure in an ad hoc so we do a pre-docking we extract the best model and this best model we will simulate using accelerate weight histogram also here we perform 100 nanosecond computational we are on the same level and what how we perform such as now we have to define a reaction coordinate and uh, the reaction coordinate we will be the distance between the two center of mass of the two protein and the, the method is somehow adding a bias potential to more more to make the effective potential flat and that will allow us a better sa a sampling of the hypervariable loop in presence of the antigen then we proceed we take only the antibody structure that has been sampled in presence of the antigen and we remove the antigen and we apply again our uh, clustering and we extract 20 structure we add the x-ray structure and we perform the protocol like before and we as perform we run ad hoc in the same way we ran before and we look to the results so 
the first uh, column is the docking, the second column is docking combined with standard molecular dynamic simulation, and the last one is when we combine with accelerated weight histogram approach used to generate the conformation for the antibody. And we can see that we have a clear improvement, not only in the graph where we show ad hoc score against docu, where we have also an increase, we have a shift of the peak of, uh, of the structure between acceptable toward medium quality structure. And if we go to look on the heat rate, we also see that we have higher medium structure, 100% medium structure at the top one, where we before we never had acceptable a medium quality structure. So that that is uh, now we have to refine this protocol to stand, of course, on more case, but it's very promising. So the conclusion is that we have we tried this work is that it's important to focus on the sampling of the upper form of the antibody. That is the main message. So probably because the antigen is more rigid molecule. So, and we need to have uh, to improve the model is a key to have a better sampling of the hypervariable loop. Now we are working to put all this workflow. Well, now we have this workflow, we are trying to import in a Jupyter notebook, some way that is ready to use for, from everybody. We will go on to generalize the approach where we use an accelerate weight histogram, and we will aim to apply to ex novo design of antibody where this there are some aspects that are still missing and that's one has to think about and that are important is the force field effect we have run only with one force field all the results were running only with uh, charm 36 as a force field we might want to consider the option to perform binding affinity calculations so to extract free energy difference and to try to improve the affinity and uh, we would like also uh, to consider, we know that all these approaches, since all the sampling, in one case, somehow the sampling, in the first protocol, the, the protonation states of the, of the antibody is the protonation states at the, at the interface. In the second case, is still so we have protonation, if we have protonation of Korean and binding level, or ion play a role on the binding interface, or how to address incomplete uh, experimental structure. So these are still open questions that we might want to investigate further. So I thank you for your attention, and I hope I would like to see you in the Q&A section with a lot of questions on this. And if in the future you have any question about Gromax or Adoc, please go to our forum and ask. And use the forum. Thank you. Bye.